So my name is Chef AJ, and my website is eatonprocess.com. It's the word unprocessed, the name of my book with the word eat, or if you can Google Chef AJ. If you have Roku or Apple TV, you can watch my television show, which is called Healthy Living with Chef AJ, and then eventually we put them on YouTube, and uh, I teach in Sherman Oaks, but I will travel anywhere to lecture or do a culinary demo. And what really made a difference in my health was January 1st, 2003, when I woke up bleeding. I had been a vegan for 26 years, but I was a junk food vegan and I was obese. I weighed about 180 pounds and I'm only five foot six. And I thought being vegan was healthy and it is, but instead of eating fruits and vegetables, I ate Skittles and Starburst. And what happened was, is it turned out I had I sometimes mispronounce this, but edematous polyps are the kind of polyps in my colon that if not removed, always turn into colon cancer. And they couldn't remove them during the normal procedure because my colon was in such a state of ill health. And so they said, I'd have to come back and have surgery. Well, I'm afraid of surgery because when I was a teenager, I had a routine operation and it turned out I was allergic to the anesthesia and I was in the hospital for months getting my breathing under control. So the thought of just having surgery just didn't appeal to me. And so on July 6, 2003, I checked into the Optimum Health Institute in San Diego with a Coke Slurpee in one hand and a Dr. Pepper in the other. By the way, that used to be my breakfast and this used to be my lunch. And it was the first time I ever heard from anyone, let alone doctors and nurses, that what we eat actually has a profound effect on our health. Not just how we look and feel, but what diseases we actually acquire and which ones we can reverse. And so even though I was doing good by not eating animal products for 26 years and I had great cholesterol and great numbers, everything I was eating was, was acidifying, was processed. It was horrible for the body. I was eating sugar and flour and oil and salt and caffeine. And I, I wasn't eating real food. I wasn't eating whole food. I, I wasn't eating any vegetables. Or I literally did not eat any fruits and vegetables until I was 43 years old. And so once I went on a whole food plant-based diet without sugar, oil, and salt, and I stayed on it, I not only lost the weight, but what happened is, is my, my precancerous polyps, they disappeared. And six months later, when I went back to the doctor and had a routine, not a routine, excuse me, a repeat procedure, he said that my colon was clean, clear, pink, and vascular like a newborn baby. And he asked me where I had the surgery. And I said, I didn't have surgery. And he says, well, there's no polyps here. And he kept poking me because they had cameras that took pictures of every polyp so they knew where they were along the colon. And I said, well, you know, I really just changed my diet. And he said, well, that's impossible. And he stormed out of the room. And there was another doctor there, another GI physician who was assisting him. And once she was sure the doctor couldn't hear her anymore, she goes, I believe you. And so it was then it was like, wow, you know, food is medicine. You know, Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine. Everybody in my family is a doctor. I never thought about that. And that's when my life completely changed. And I took a leave of absence from my job, which was as an activity director at a retirement home. I went to culinary school and wrote a book called Unprocessed. And I've been just spreading the word on whole food, plant-based eating for, you know, for the last about 15 years now. So what I like about you, Dr. Nick, is even though we're meeting for the first time in person, I have known your work for some time. And as a matter of fact, your stellar YouTube video about how to become diabetic in six hours, I send out to everyone, all my clients, whenever I teach a cooking class, that's always in the follow-up. So honestly, the truth was, is I really didn't know to not eat oil for health reasons, or even for if you just wanted to lose weight and not necessarily be healthy, until the summer of 2008. It was about five years after eating pretty much a health-promoting diet like they taught at Optimum Health. But then when I went to culinary school, they had me convinced. But if it was coconut oil, it was okay, things like that. So I, it started creeping back in. But I heard a lecture by Dr. Caldwell B. Esselstyn, Jr., the author of Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease and one of the stars of Forks Over Knives. And even though I knew that oil was fattening, because oil is the most calorically dense and nutritionally bereft food on the planet, it's 4,000 calories a pound. And what I don't understand is everybody agrees whether they eat sugar or not, that it's pretty much a junk food. That the definition of a junk food is a food that has a lot of calories and no nutrients. Well, sugar is only 1,800 calories a pound. Oil is twice as calorically dense. So I knew it was fattening, because Dr. McDougall has been saying for 40 years, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. But I didn't know until hearing this lecture that it actually caused damage to our endothelial cells, which are the life jacket of our circulatory system, and that all oil was atherogenic, diabetogenic, and obesogenic. And even though I was still overweight at the time, once Dr. Esselstyn explained it to me and showed those graphs, and I'm like, oh, okay. And I was a chef, it was very easy to not use oil. As a matter of fact, 
I call sugar, oil, and salt the evil trinity in my book on process, but it's from a culinary standpoint, oil is the easiest thing to get rid of. And I was a pastry chef for four years at a restaurant, I didn't use oil. Salt's the hardest thing to get rid of, and sugar's sort of in the middle, but it can be done. You don't need oil. I, I just did a cooking demo. You can saute in anything, and so you don't need it. And you know, the truth is, oil coats the taste buds of your tongue, so when you use it, now you're gonna to have to use way more salt to taste the food. So it really is a triumph of marketing over science. You know, all this EVOO and heart healthy. It's, it's, it's the least heart healthy food you could eat. You wanna be heart healthy, eat kale, eat fruits and vegetables. It's 4,000 calories a pound. It's 120 calories a tablespoon. You know, it's 40 times as calorically dense as vegetables. And that's why Americans are so fat and sick. We're, we're just, I think the obesity rate is 38% now. Three fourths of Americans are overweight. I help people with weight loss in my Ultimate Weight Loss Program, and sometimes they're people that don't want to be healthy. I get some models and actresses, and I go, you want to be skinny? Stop oil, stop cheese. And then come back in a month, they've lost 10 pounds. So nobody needs oil except for cars, really. Or if you want to put a little on your skin, I suppose that's okay. It won't get absorbed as much. Salad dressings, three parts oil. To, I forget what the ratio is because I don't use oil. But for instance, balsamic vinegar comes in 50 flavors. There's, there's a vendor here now with flavors like jalapeno lime and pumpkin pie spice. I'm not talking about Heinz white vinegar that you use to clean things. I'm talking about a good quality aged, low acidity balsamic vinegar. That's all you need to dress a salad. Okay, so you wanna be fancier? I'm not telling people not to eat fat, eat whole food fat, like nuts and seeds and avocado. You can make amazing dressings out of those. I have many in my book on processed and many on my website for free at eatunprocessed.com, but you can make delicious dresses, dr dressings with whole food fats. So vinegars are great. You know, salsa is a great dressing, believe it or not. It's great on a salad with some beans and some corn and some rice, and even hummus, thinned out a little bit, makes a great dressing. So beans, by the way, fantastic way to make really creamy, like seasoned your mouthfeel type dressings using beans. So you really don't need oil. You don't need it to cook. You don't need it to bake. You don't need it to, to saute. You do need it to fry, but I don't think anybody would agree that frying anything is healthy. So it's just, it's just, I don't get how people don't get this. I really don't, but and you know, you save money. The thing is, is not using oil. Not only do you save all the calories and you save your arterial lining, but, but you save money. And I work with restaurants in Los Angeles where I live. And at first when I come in, the chefs are like, because they don't teach you how not to use oil in culinary school. And the chefs are like this and like, but when I teach them how good food can taste without it, and they get used to cooking that way, they're pleased because as chefs, they're responsible for the budgets. And now they're taking oil out of their sauces and dressings and their soups, which is unnecessary. They're saving money. You know, I can understand like, if you really like oil, what I encourage people to do is drink it. Drink a cup of oil. You know what's gonna happen? You're gonna vomit because oil is an emetic. It actually, if you can't get to poison control, drink olive oil, you'll vomit. You don't like it, you like it because it's the most calorically dense food on the planet. It's 4,000 calories a pound. It stimulates more production of dopamine in your brain than any other food. You like how it makes you feel. You really don't like the taste. It tastes pretty darn nasty. And you know, when I teach my cooking classes, I make a black bean soup at home. And a lot of times if I have time, I'll do two recipes where I'll do the first one the way you're supposed to, where you saute the onion and the garlic in a quarter cup of oil, and I'll do the other one the other way. And either people say they can't tell the difference, or the one they say is better is the one without oil. So you don't need oil. You like the effect it has on your brain because it's a high calorie food, but you don't need it. And it's just food tastes so much better without it. A cup of olive oil is, is 16, it would be 16 times 120. So right. yeah, okay. yeah. So it's a pound. Yeah. So it's about 900 calories per cup. That's yeah. What it is. Right. It's about 14, 1,444 olives to make a cup. About. That's an example. I, I, Pritikin used to say it takes 14 ears of corn to make one tablespoon. And I thought it was 16 ears of corn, but go figure. And how many people could even eat 14 ears of corn? About two or three, you'd be full. Right, right. Yeah. Um, you have some stand-up comedy jokes about <laughs> food. Can you do a roll? What, a, a raw food jokes? Let me think. No, not raw. Just oh, just jokes. Well, jokes on... On vegan, on or, vegan. Or well, vegan or healthy. Well, you know, I mean, this one's a, no, this one might be even no, be okay. too I'll funny. Okay, well, no, I was going to say, off, uh, well, here, you know, here, it, uh, let's, let's tie it into to something where that's educational. I, this is, this is not a joke I, I wrote, but it, but I actually use this to teach my classes because 
when people say they like things like bacon, for example, I was doing a, a seminar, I do these lunch and learns at companies, and there was about 60 people there, and this gentleman walked in, he goes, are you serving any bacon? And I'm like, no. He goes, well, then I'm, I'm getting the hell out of here. And I'm thinking, okay, kind of put a little damper on the mood. And, and so I said to the people, I said, guys, look, let me explain something about bacon. You, you don't like bacon because you want to eat a pig's butt. You like bacon because of sugar, fat, and salt. That's why you like everything. Honestly, you could take styrofoam peanuts, fry them up in some oil and salt, and you know, you'd like that too. And I said, listen guys, there's worse things in life than not eating you know, bacon. And they're like, really, what? And I'm like, okay, well, let me tell you about the rabbi and the priest. There was this rabbi and the priest, and they were sitting next to each other in an airplane. They didn't know they were in the same profession, even though the priest was wearing his little collar. And the priest said to the rabbi, Rabbi, you need to tell me, I know in your faith you can't eat pork, but, but did you ever eat it? And the rabbi said, priest, you must promise never to tell my congregation, but before entering rabbinical school, one time I had a BLT. The priest said, don't worry, rabbi, your secret's safe with me. And the rabbi said, well, priest, you know that I've got to ask you this. In your faith, you have to take a vow of celibacy. Have you ever broken that vow? And the priest said, rabbi, you must promise never to tell my congregation, but one time, before entering the seminary, yes, I did have sex with a woman. And the rabbi goes, sure beats bacon, doesn't it? And so, <laughs> so the thing is, guys, you know, I'm not this mean person trying to take away all your pleasure in life and tell you not to eat animal products and oil. There is other ways to get dopamine in your brain, and sex is a great one. Exercise is a great one. Volunteer, you know, volunteering, I believe, is, an, is another great one. So anyway, that, that wasn't really about vegetables, but you know, I mean, this, this, is, this is a really bad joke, but I'll tell it anyway, but it's kind of funny. So these two carrots were driving down the 405 freeway in Los Angeles. They were in a car accident. They were taken to the emergency room. Doctor, and one of the carrots died immediately. And so the doctor said to the other carrot, he goes, God, you know, you're really lucky. Um, you know, I got some good news and bad news. The good news is, is you're alive, but you're gonna be a vegetable the rest of your life. <laughs> It's so bad. I'm so sorry. But you put me on the spot with jokes. Those are the two that came to mind right away, you know. Or um, how do you know if somebody's vegan? Oh, don't worry. They'll tell you, you know. <laughs> well, here's the interesting thing, Dr. Nick, is that I did not, I am almost 56 years old and I did not start exercising until I was 52. And I say that because to inspire people that it's never too late to start healthy lifestyle behaviors, whether it's eating right or exercising. I, like many people, followed the principle of energy conservation and I was a couch potato. Also, I was quite overweight. And I, I, I lost all the weight, the 60 pounds without exercising. And I'm, you need to know that you can lose weight without exercising, but you really need it to maintain your weight, just so you know that. You can't just get, you can't get out of not exercising. But what happened is I was teaching my ultimate weight loss program with my partner, John Pierre, a fitness person, and we're telling people to eat vegetables and eat kale for breakfast, and he's telling people to move their body, and I'm like not moving my body. And he said, well, you know, you're not doing what you preach. I said, sure, I'm eating the vegetables. He goes, no, no, we're telling people to move. And you know, you tell people that if they don't like kale, just to eat it, they'll learn to like it. And yet you say you don't like exercise. And so what I did, and I learned this from my meditation teacher too, is the best meditation is the one you'll actually do. So it's better to do one minute of some kind of meditation than to not do any, and then eventually you'll do more. And so what I did is I started with the exercise I hated the least, which is yoga. Because I do a form of yoga called yin restorative, which is basically like napping. But the thing is, is once I got into the habit of going to a studio three times a week, building my self-esteem, seeing that I could get better and more flexible, I started doing other things. And I, I, I'm blessed to be an instructor and a lecturer at a really high-end spa in Tecate, Mexico called Rancho La Puerta. And all they do there they, is, is fitness. And so I was there and I tried all these different classes that I never heard of, TRX and spinning and you know, I don't even know the names of half of them. And I got on the spin bike and it was a 45 minute class and the teacher goes, you can burn four to 600 calories doing this. And I'm like, you know what, this isn't so bad. I can do this. And then I started doing that and now I, I've got a boot on my foot, but for the most part I exercise. But the best exercise is adopting a dog at the shelter because I have to walk two hours a day. That dog needs a lot of exercise. So I do love exercise now. And you know, they say we never really give up our addictions. We trade one for another. And I think, you know, I was a food addict for many years. I was obese and eating lots of dessert all day, even though it's vegan. And now, I mean, my brain loves exercise and exercise is so important. And I, I'm sorry that I was so late to the party, but hey, better late than never. And it's, it, you know, I've had people come to my class that are 90. It is never too late to, 
go in the direction of optimum health. It, wherever you are, start where you are. And just because you can't do everything doesn't mean you can't do anything. Everybody can eat another serving of vegetables or eat a salad. And maybe, you know, there are people that have limitations. They really can't exercise right now. But pool, they can get in the pool. Even if they're very, very overweight, they can walk in the shallow end of the pool. There's something that everybody can do. I used to be an activity director. I've seen people in wheelchairs. You can do something, but use it or lose it for the brain, for the body. You know, so I do love exercise, and I'm sorry that I joined this. Uh, I, now I understand why people like it. It makes you feel really good and look good, too. Tell me about the spaghetti squash. What kind of vegetables can you put before you kiss and <laughs> electric cooler? Electric, uh, oh, the perfect. Well, we just did a, a, a wonderful uh, culinary presentation here, and I have this little tool that you can get for $20 called a spiralizer. Mine was called a spiruli, and you take a zucchini or a carrot or a turnip or a beet, and you go, and it makes these very long strands. And zucchini, and it was about this long, and I thought about one of my favorite movies from childhood called Lady and the Tramp, and I called up a guy in the front row who happened to be a doctor, and I put one end in my mouth and one end in his mouth, and we, and then we ended up kissing, and his wife was cool with it. Hopefully my husband won't see this. He'll be cool with it. It wasn't like a passionate kiss, Charles. It was just more like a peck, but it was very cool. And then we used something called the Instant Pot electric pressure cooker, my favorite kitchen appliance. Make soup, stews, chili in less than 30 minutes, beans in 10 minutes. It's, it's fabulous. And when people say they can't eat healthy, either it's because they don't have enough time and they don't have enough money. With a pressure cooker, you have both because when you buy things in bulk, like beans or grains, it's 49 cents a pound. So it's a, it's a really wonderful uh, tool to have if you're trying to eat healthier and get dinner on the table fast. Two burning questions for the uneducated. Fruit, is it healthy? And where do we get our protein? Oh boy, well sure fruit is healthy. You know, if you eat anything in its whole food form is healthy. And what people have to understand that, you know, I know there's some people that eat like 50 bananas a day and it works for them. But I think for the masses, that's probably too much sugar. But the sugar in fruit, which is fructose, it's way different than eating processed sugar because it's mitigated by the fact that fruit is also full of fiber and water and vitamins and minerals. That said, fruit is very, very delicious. It's about 300 calories a pound, three times as calorically dense as vegetables, more dopamine in the brain, and it is possible to overdo it for some people. Now, I recommend fruit in its whole food form. It can be fresh, it can be frozen in a smoothie, when you take the water out, as in dried fruit, you've now increased the caloric density from 300 calories a pound to 1,300. Not to say you can't sprinkle some raisins on your oatmeal, but I don't recommend dried fruits as snacks. A lot of people just tend to go for those bananas because they're low, low in water, high in sugar, and bananas are great, but think about the whole kingdom of fruits and eat some of the berries, the low glycemic fruits, the apples. A lot of people don't realize that there are six things that are fruits that are actually considered non-starchy vegetables So because they have seeds. So zucchini, tomato, cucumber, bell pepper, okra, eggplant. I eat these every day. I roast them. These are actually fruits, and you can eat these in unlimited quantities. But for the sweeter fruits, what I recommend people eat the fruit, the whole fruit, and nothing but the whole fruit instead of desserts. So, eat, you know, fruit is now my dessert as a former sugar addict. And it's, it's so delicious, and fruit has been hybridized now that fruit is so sweet. Sometimes it's even too sweet for me. We have, in California where I live, fruits that some people tell me they don't have where they live, but things like the sugar kiss melon, which is an exclusive to the store Gelson, or the mango apricot. We have these hybrid fruits that are just amazing, or the cherry plum. So fruits are great. You know, don't think that all you can eat is bananas, apples, and oranges. That's what people tend to do. What I like to do with fruit is I like to freeze it. Frozen fruit is every bit as nutritious as fresh, studies have shown, because it's picked at its peak of ripeness and it retains all its nutrients. And I like to make fruit sorbet. I have what's called a champion juicer. I also have a Vitamix. So instead of eating some sugary dessert, every night after dinner we end with a sweet treat, a little bit of non-dairy milk, some of the frozen fruit, maybe if it's an apple, some cinnamon, and we have a huge bowl of fruit ice cream for about 200 calories that has virtually no fat, that's satisfying and creamy and delicious. So fruit, I think, is absolutely healthy. That said, certain people, if they're diabetic or have high triglycerides, you know, I don't think they should necessarily eat it by itself. So for example, I make a quinoa salad, but I put some grapes in it. Or sometimes if I eat steamed kale, I'll put some pineapple in it. So you mix it with some vegetables, because that will make your vegetables and salad taste delicious. And by the way, you can make salad dressings without oil using fruits. Strawberries, for example. 
I have a food dehydrator and I, I love it. It's not necessary to eat healthfully, but you end up saving money because things like sun-dried tomatoes, they're great, but they can be expensive. You can make your own when tomatoes are in season or fruits when they're in season, strawberries. So you have these things that you can use and add to your oatmeal. So I happen to love dehydrating. I make my own granola and uh, you know I don't think it's a difficult thing to use. And I like it, but it's not necessary. But you know, you can get one for forty bucks. A good one at Costco or even at Walmart. You don't have to have the top of the line Excalibur if you can afford it. It is a very, very good one. But I do like dehydrating. And um, you know, I have a friend that, believe it or not, we travel full time, and so to get through TSA, you can't always get hummus through. They some some of them say too much liquid. Some say it's okay. And so what he started doing was he took the, his homemade hummus made without oil. Tahini's fine if you like, and then he dehydrated it. When he got to his destination, he just add water in his hotel room and he'd have hummus. I thought that was a brilliant idea. Thank you, John Pierre. You asked about protein though. And boy, you know, being being uh, vegan for almost 40 years, I actually have a t-shirt that says, you know, yes, I get enough protein. No, my shoes aren't leather. And you know, and there's one that says I've got 99 problems, but getting enough protein isn't one of them. If I honestly had a nickel for every time somebody asked me that question, I could retire because the truth is, is I have spoken at Kaiser Permanente several times to over 300 physicians. And I've said to them, has anyone here in all your years seen a case of protein deficiency, which is called quarky or short? One lecture, one doctor raised her hand and said yes. It was a child abuse case. They were starving the child. You can't be protein deficient unless you're calorie deficient. And as long as you're eating enough calories, there's protein in everything. Even fruit has a little protein. Greens have protein. Oats, all the largest land mammals, the elephant, the rhinoceros, they're herbivores. You know, and we eat the animals that are that eat the plants. Just eat the plants. That's where all the omega-3 fatty acid is. That's where all the protein is. You don't need to eat the cow to get the protein. Anything you can get on a, a standard American meat-based diet, you can get in a better, more utilizable form on a plant-based diet, with the exception of B12, and that's because our soil is depleted. Cows don't produce B12. They get it from eating the dirt. So just don't wash your organic produce. But, you know, the, this is just such a myth, and thankfully, Dr. Garth Davis just wrote a wonderful book called Proteinaholic, where he shatters all these myths. We get too much protein on the standard American diet, and that causes, you know this better than me, the, all the acid in the body and all the disease it's caused. Nobody's protein deficient. Think about it. When a baby needs the most protein in its life is when it's an infant. Breast milk is less than 10% protein. Why would the most perfect food for humans have the lowest amount of protein? We don't need more than about 10% of our calories from protein. If you're worried and you're an athlete, you really need more calories, not more protein. If you want to do a whole food plant-based protein powder, that's fine with me. If you want to eat a little more quinoa than other grains, you know, get enough protein. Again, on one of these myths, you know, these industries, like the dairy industry, like the meat industry, like the olive oil industry, need to be held accountable. You know, at least the tobacco industry doesn't, they don't claim their product's good. And I don't think the sugar industry doesn't claim that's good. They, you know, I think one day these companies will be held accountable for all the lies they're perpetuating for about food. If it's not found in nature in a whole plant form, don't eat it. If it comes from a plant, eat it. If it's manufactured in a plant, don't eat it. You know, Jack LaLanne said 13 years that if everyone lived their life by, we'd never be overweight, we'd never be sick. And he said, if God made it, eat it. If man made it, don't eat it. And the thing is, even if, yes, God did make animals, but the animals that we're eating today are not what our ancestors ate. And our ancestors certainly didn't eat the animals the way they were engineered to be higher in fat and higher in protein and fed mass doses of hormones and antibiotics and that, that, oh, it's just, bleh. I just can't, you know, I'm just so thankful that I don't eat that stuff, you know. You know, I feel like Franz Kafka said, you know, now that I don't eat you, I can look at you in peace. You just feel so much better when you don't eat animals and oil. You look better. Like I said, I'm 56 years old. You feel better. And, um, you know, I think that stuff's addictive. I do think meat and oil's addictive. That's why people can't stop eating it. Here's the thing. I went vegan before I started having sex. So I can't compare it, unfortunately. But yeah, you know, it, 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 it is. And I'll tell you why. Dr. Terry Mason, the urologist in, in Cook County Health System in Chicago, who was one of the stars of Forks Over Knives, talks about how if you have vascular disease anywhere, you have vascular disease everywhere. And now men as young as in their 20s are getting, you know, they're suffering from um, erectile dysfunction. They're giving them these blue pills, Viagra or whatever. Well, the reason is, is because the endothelial cells are also lining the penis. They're smaller ones. And by the time a man goes to his urologist or any doctor with impotence, he's already got heart disease everywhere. So at least for a man, for sure it's better on a plant-based diet because their arteries aren't going to get clogged down there. 
there. So if you want to avoid taking a blue pill, you know, eat some of those green leaves. For a woman, I would say the vasculature is probably the same. Maybe not, it's not called erectile dysfunction, but I'm sure that, you know, eating plants and not eating oil and animals makes your vasculature wide open, your blood vessels are open. So more blood, more hot sex, you know, I'm guessing. <laughs>